afternoon. Welcome to this reflective service. Our theme today is how can we be bold as Christians? Shall we start with an opening prayer? Father God, we praise you for your faithfulness, your love and your mercy. And we thank you for your many blessings. As we come together in your presence today, guide us by your promptings of your Holy Spirit and draw us closer to you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We will now say together the collect for today. Almighty God, to whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So now read some scripture sentences. The first one is Isaiah 41, verse 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And the second scripture sentence is from Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. We will now sing our first hymn, O Church Arise.
will now say together the canticle. If you would like to read the words printed in yellow. God be merciful unto us and bless us and show us the light of his countenance and be merciful unto us that thy ways may be known upon earth thy saving health among all nations let the people praise thee O God yea let all the people praise thee O let the nations rejoice and be glad for thou shalt judge the folk righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Let the people praise thee, O God. Yea, let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth bring forth her increase and God, even our own God, shall give us his blessing. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the world shall fear him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Martin is now going to read our Bible reading for us. After that, Phil will be giving our talk for today and then we will be listening to some reflective music. Good afternoon. The reading this afternoon is taken from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 3, verses 1 to 21. For this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles. Surely you have heard about the administration of God's grace that was given to me for you. That is, the mystery made known to me by revelation, as I have already written briefly. In reading this, then, you will be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to people in other generations, as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to God's holy apostles and prophets. This mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body, and sharers together in the promise in Christ Jesus. I became a servant of this gospel by the gift of God's grace given to me through the working of his power. Although I am less than the least of all the Lord's people, this grace was given to me to preach to the Gentiles the boundless riches of Christ and to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery, which for ages past was kept hidden in God, who created all things. His intent was that now, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms, according to his eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. In him, and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. I ask you, therefore, not to be discouraged because of my sufferings for you, which are your glory. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him 
who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is worked within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good afternoon. In our passage today, Paul speaks of how the gospel has been revealed to him as an apostle through the Holy Spirit. And through that gospel, Gentiles have been made heirs to the promises that were made to God's chosen people, the people of Israel. We're the Gentiles. That same gospel that Paul talks about here is the one that we received when we first became Christians. The gospel bringing the good news of Jesus Christ. The gospel that gives us salvation and a new life with Christ an eternal life with him. So we too have inherited the promises made to the people of Israel and are now members of God's chosen people. Paul goes on to say that it was God's intention that by faith in his son Jesus Christ that all people may approach God with freedom and confidence. Paul then prays to God that by the hope of the Holy Spirit, by the help of the Holy Spirit, we will be strengthened and Christ will dwell in our hearts. He then goes on to pray that with Christ in our hearts, that we should fully experience his love and be filled with the fullness of God. So then, as Christians, we're God's chosen people and can approach him with freedom and confidence. Through faith in Christ, we've been set free from sin and have a new eternal life with him. Our old life is behind us, and our allegiance is no longer to this world. We've received the Holy Spirit to strengthen us, and Christ Jesus lives in our hearts. In Christ is the fullness of God, so in Christ and through the power of the Holy Spirit, we're receiving the benefits of that fullness each day. In his talk to us recently, the bishop said that the diocese was going to concentrate on three things in the future, which were to be humbler, simpler and bolder in its overall approach. Instead of looking at these three themes in relation to the diocesan business, we're looking at how they apply to our Christian lives. In the last two reflective services, we looked at humbler and simpler. Today, we're going to look at bolder. Let's have a definition of boldness. The Oxford Dictionary defines boldness as willingness to take risks and act innovatively, or confidence, or courage. Let's break down that definition and see how those benefits we looked at from our passage earlier can help us to be bold. Firstly, a willingness to take risks. Well, we take a risk when we first become a Christian, knowing that we're swimming against the tide compared to the majority of the people around us. We have to be willing to move out of our comfort zones, because the time is short. Jesus could be coming back any time. The church has a job to do and we have an important part to play. We can be confident because as one of God's chosen people, we have access to him and he will support us in all our efforts to build his kingdom. In Matthew 5 verses 25 to 33, we're told not to be anxious, but to seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness and he will provide what we need. We can be courageous, not because of our own strength, because as we are assured in Psalm 46, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. Let's now look at the different aspects of our Christian lives and how we can be bold in our approach to all of them. We'll look at service, discipleship, prayer and evangelism. By Christian service, we mean any work we do for God, whether in the community, at work or in the church. We can be bold by taking a risk and putting ourselves forward for tasks when prompted by the Holy Spirit. It's easy to feel that we're not capable of doing things, but we'll be given the courage to do them. Sometimes we need other people to tell us about the gifts we have before we recognise them. In 1 Peter 4 verse 10, we're told, each of you should use whatever gift you have to serve others as faithful students, stewards of God's grace in its various forms. 
The implication is that we all have gifts which can be used in the building of God's kingdom. By discipleship, we mean the process of becoming like Christ. It is to take on the character of Christ, to live in the world as Christ would, to have the same priorities in life as Christ. When we become a Christian, we stop doing things that we did before, and friends and family notice, and some don't understand. We should no longer join in gossip, or listen to dirty jokes, or use bad language, or badmouth others in front of people. To live as Christ means that sometimes we need to speak out against injustice in the workplace or wherever we meet it. That can make us unpopular or even lead to discrimination against us. As Paul said in Ephesians 4.22, you were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. We have a new life. We need to be bold and throw off the habits of the old life. In prayer we need to be bold. Sometimes we're afraid to ask for things for ourselves as we tend to think that praying is something we should do for others, which of course it is. But we need to share our weaknesses with God and ask help. Being bold doesn't mean struggling on our own with problems, especially if we're being tempted to sin. As part of the process of being transformed to be like Christ, there will be struggles on the way. And as we're told in 1 John 5.14, this is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. In evangelism, we need to be bold. Evangelism is about proclaiming the good news of the gospel. Paul says in Romans 1, verse 16 to 21, I have complete confidence in the gospel and its power to save all who believe. So all we have to do is to take risks and get the gospel out there and God's power will do the rest. We struggle as individuals because we tend to think that the success of evangelism depends on us. We shrink back because we're not articulate enough or we think we're not articulate enough or persuasive enough to lead others to Christ. But how many people have been converted by argument? Conversion is a process which cannot begin unless a person is first of all introduced into a situation where they can hear the gospel. Before Jesus ascended to heaven, he made clear to the disciples that their priority was to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that he had commanded. That is our priority. And as we said earlier, this is urgent, because Jesus could return at any moment, and there are still many millions who haven't heard the gospel message. So as the disciples of Jesus now, we must be bold to help in any way we can, in the process of making disciples and growing the kingdom of God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have chosen us to be part of your kingdom in this place. We thank you for Jesus and the new life he's made possible for us. Transform us each day to be more like him and to be good witnesses to others. Thank you for your Holy Spirit, who reminds us of your teaching and prompts us when we go wrong. Help us to be bold as your disciples, to lead others to Jesus and bring glory to you. Amen.
let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We will now sing the hymn, God of Grace and God of Glory. we now say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. We hope you've enjoyed the service and the next reflective service will be on April the 27th. We hope you can join us.